to six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here. I spent a lot of time online following Facebook groups and message boards and looking at what different companies are offering in this industry. It's always exciting to see small shops coming out with kits and options for you to improve your tractor. One of those things that I see coming up fairly frequently is guys investing money in hydraulic testing kits and shim kits to raise the system pressure of their hydraulic system. Today we're going to take a look at this B2650, explain to you a little bit about what some of those people People may be doing and some of the results you can expect if you go down this road. The main hydraulic system on your tractor is responsible for doing a lot of different things. Essentially you've got a shaft coming off of your engine that drives a gear pump, a pump that's pumping all the time up to a set hydraulic pressure where there's a relief valve and then that feed of oil goes out to all kinds of different places on your machine. It drives your three-point hitch, your loader control valve to operate your loader, your backhoe, any implements that you've got plugged into rear remotes are all fed off of that main hydraulic pump. In most tractors, your power steering is an exception to that. That's run off of a separate loop. The pressure that comes off of that is gonna feed all of those things, and it's responsible for doing a lot of work. By and large, checking those hydraulic pressures is not something that dealerships typically are going to do in a PDI and prep process. The factory does a really good job of having those pressures set for us appropriately when machines are delivered to a customer. Every service manual that we go through is going to have a set hydraulic range for theirs, where those pressures are supposed to fall on a given model. It does vary some from model to model, but on most tractors you're talking hydraulic pressures around 24 to 2600 pounds on most machines. In the case of this B2650 here, the recommended range coming out of the service manual is 2400 to 2450 pounds. The way that we check those pressures, and the same is done in the kits that guys typically are selling to do this at home, is to very simply hook a gauge onto the loader control valve, pop that onto there and operate the loader control valve in order to run fluid into that circuit and test it. So I'm going to do that here for you today. So I have a little pressure gauge made up here that I use for YouTube videos and testing hydraulics and grapples and that kind of thing. This is a heavily Chinesium pressure gauge ordered straight from AliExpress, right? It's certainly not a precision instrument. This has around a 2% margin of error in the operating range that we're going to be in. Very simply here, it's just a quarter inch hydraulic coupler coming off the loader valve, which tees off here to the gauge. I oftentimes are gonna allow that pressure to feed through here to test other implements and stuff on the other side. But for the purpose of this, we're very simply going to start our tractor. Bring this up to 2500 engine RPMs. And then go ahead and actuate the loader forward. And you can see here that I come up with a pressure at 2,383 PSI, so I'm 17 pounds below what the tractor's supposed to come out from the factory, well within my 2% margin of error. So conceivably, somebody could look at this and think you could get a little bit more capacity and performance out of this tractor, but just what are you going to get exactly? This next point brings me to the purpose of this video. When I see guys talking about going through this process and raising their hydraulic system pressure up to meet the low end of the factory spec or going up above it a little bit, they'll go and talk about their machines like they have become completely different pieces of equipment, right? Like my little tractor couldn't pick up anything and now I can move mountains with it. Just seems to be the way that people talk about these things. That though is simply mathematically untrue. When you go and raise your hydraulic system pressure on your tractor, say the 1% that I'm below on this tractor right here, or say 100 PSI beyond the factory spec, which is raising at three or 4%, you're literally increasing the performance of your loader literally in exactly that same way, that one, two, three, four percent more that you've increased that pressure. The working capacity of your tractor is directly related to the pressure that's going into these cylinders. So a 2% change in pressure equals a 2% change in performance. There is absolutely a huge amount of placebo effect going on here where we've said, you know, I invested the $100 in the shim kit and I did the work and now 
I'm good to go. I'm doing a whole lot more work with the tractor and it's, it's not real. Um, this was actually bared out. A good guy did a great YouTube video, Biff's equipment that I'll include some clips of here at the end, that went through and did this test and had a load cell on hand to actually measure it. And he backed up what I'm saying here and actually giving you measurements to show that a little bit more pressure, 2% more pressure equals 2% more lift. So take in mind when you read the experiences of some of these people my opinion is what you're seeing here is a lot of placebo effect and if they measured a machine at say two percent three percent under factory spec what they really picked up in performance is that two or three percent I'd also say too, you wanna to watch, especially when you're measuring these things with the analog gauges, you know, you're gonna have a margin of error in these gauges, especially in the really inexpensive ones that guys are picking up to do this, where the factory spec might actually not be off at all, but you're simply measuring it that way because of the quality of the testing tools that we're using. So to put some real numbers to how things would actually work out on this particular tractor, if you went through and bumped this up with an additional shim in the hydraulic system and added that additional PSI, you would be raising the system pressure 2% and giving yourself 16 pounds of additional lift capacity in the bucket. If you went and you pushed that further, some guys are taking these shims and going just a little bit over the factory spec, you know, kind of trusting that, hey, I want more, but I'm not going to push the tractor too hard, and went up a full 100 PSI, adding 4% over the factory specification. Congratulations, you have added 33 pounds of lift capacity to your tractor. So, in my opinion, if you see something that feels grossly off, dealerships have the good testing tools to be able to go through and check this stuff out. Not something I tend to like to see homebrew stuff on. And just, if you go down this road and you wanna be able to check these things yourself, that's cool. Like I'm totally into all the doodads and the customizing and playing with our tractors that we do. But just realize, there are some mathematical and just simple engineering problems with a lot of the descriptions that you're gonna read online regarding the results that guys get out of this stuff. My opinion, we're looking at a lot of placebo effect here. Really on any of these tractors, a modern machine today is incredibly capable for the weight that a machine is. If you take any one of these tractors, it's very easy to pop the rear ends clear up in the air when you're driving around and working your tractor. If you're running a machine and you're feeling like it's not performing the way that you want, a lot of times what you simply need to learn is a little bit more technique, right? You do not become an expert at operating one of these machines in the first 10, 50, even two, 300 hours of being in the seat of the machine. Learning to be an operator and knowing how to get the power out of your implements and your loader comes from years of experience, years that even I don't have. I'm, blown away by what a lot of our customers and operators and guys can do with this equipment. Even me being in the seat very frequently, I'm not as good as what they are and I can't lift the loads and manipulate the things in the same way that they can. And so learning that technique from other operators or watching YouTube videos from guys that are really good at this kind of stuff is gonna help you become a lot more adept at operating that piece of equipment and getting the full capacity out of it rather than just jacking the hydraulic system pressure up and maybe pushing the machine beyond the bounds where it's meant to go. This is something that you very easily can mess up, simply over tightening the nut, the cap that's on top of where the spring and these shims go, can push these pressures up really high. And I haven't heard of anybody blow something up, but this is fairly trivial to do, but can be done wrong too if you're not watching the gauges and stuff as you're doing it. So just be cautious what you're out there playing with. And again, you go down this road, just have proper expectations of what you're actually getting out of your tractor. Don't be bought in by the funny stories that you're here out there sometimes. So shopping for a piece of equipment if we can help, or if you have parts of service needs for a machine you've already got, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're finally gonna do the highly anticipated uh, loader lift capacity video with my Kubota VX. I did a video about five months ago about the um, about increasing your lift capacity uh, by increasing your relief valve pressure. And I talked in that video about doing a test with my crane scale to show a comparison between stock pressures and the pressure I was at now. Okay, well, as you guys seen there, it hit about 2,000 PSI, pretty much on the money, 2,000. Um, so now we know basically how far I can go because I have every shim in that I ever bought for this. Okay, guys.
okay so as you've seen we are exactly at 1750 which is good because typically when you're buying a brand new Kubota BX that's about where you're going to get it at about 1750 maybe plus or minus 50 psi so this is a really good uh, base starting point to do our lift capacity test with we're at 1750 psi we'll do a pull and see what we get All right, so that was about 930 pounds. That was with the skid steer coupler being about 40 inches off the ground. This isn't a test of how much you can lift in the bucket. You know, this is just a test seeing what kind of uh, what kind of power differences we have between the stock relief valve pressure and a modified relief valve pressure. So now I'm gonna put my shims back in it and we'll get it back up to 2000 PSI. I ran some numbers real quick and this is what I come up with. Okay, so at 1750 PSI, we lifted 930 pounds um, and that was with the boom 40 inches in the air from the bottom of the skid steer plate at the pivot pin, okay? And then at the same measurements with the relief set at 2000 PSI, we lifted at 1,080 pounds. So in total, that's a 150 pound increase, which really isn't bad. A lot of people think that every 100 PSI of um, loader pressure gives you 100, 100 pounds more you can lift. And it's close, but it's not quite exactly. Um, I did some math here. So basically for every 250 PSI of increase, you get 150 pounds more that you're able to lift. I divided both these numbers in half just to work with some smaller numbers. And that equals out to every 125 PSI of loader increase will gain you about 75 pounds of lift capacity. Um, so, you know, it's not quite perfect, but it's not, it's really not bad. I mean, that's a pretty good gain. Um, so just, you know, some things to keep in mind when you're doing this, like I said before, um, with the shims, every 10th is about 40 to 50 PSI. So if you're trying to figure it out without, you know, throwing a shim in and checking it 15 times, you know, this will get you close. So just remember that if you got, you know, a 40,000 shim, that'll get you around, you know, 180 to 200 um, PSI of an increase. And we know from that, 250 PSI will get you about 150 pounds of an increase. <laughs>